Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres, from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci-fi. If you love to read, this is the podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Hello and welcome to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Sarah, and it's Thursday, so our second episode of the week. I hope you were able to tune in for Tuesday's episode to hear the interview with Roger Johns. And as a reminder about that, it is a giveaway opportunity, so make sure that you go listen to that episode and find out more about the book, and maybe you want to enter the giveaway. And there's instructions in that episode on how to do that. You may have already read the title of this episode, and it is Banned Books Week. That is this week. We are smack in the middle of Banned Books Week, actually nearing the end because it's September 23rd through September 29th, so we are getting close to the end of the week. I'm really glad that I found out about it uh, this week and not later and went, oh shoot, I missed it (laughs) because that's usually what happens to me in these types of situations. But fortunately, one of the many newsletters that I signed up for and forgot signing up for or what what have you don't remember when I signed up for it uh, sent I got a newsletter this week and it talked about banned books week so I decided to look into it it turns out that this is a week about banned uh, and challenged books and it is from the ALA office for intellectual freedom ALA of course standing for American Library Association and I thought I would give you a little background information from their website. This is from the a this is from ALA.org. And it says about Banned Books Week. Banned Books Week 2018 is September 23rd through the 29th. It brings together the entire book community. Librarians, booksellers, publishers, journalists, teachers, and readers of all types, in shared support of the freedom to seek and to express ideas, even those some consider unorthodox or unpopular. The books featured during Banned Books Week have all been targeted with removal or restricted in libraries and schools. By focusing on efforts across the country to remove or restrict access to books, Banned Books Week draws attention, draws national attention to the harms of censorship. And um, their their theme, their logo for this, uh, I assume for this year, maybe for every year, um, Banning Books Silences Stories, which is very true. It's uh, banning books, challenging books, limits, and um, puts restrictions on whose voice can be heard. So when we ban books, we silence voices, we silence stories, and that is never good because we need diversity in our stories. We need to hear those stories, even if they challenge our worldview. That's especially when we need to hear those stories. We need to hear stories that make us uncomfortable because that is when we we learn and we grow and we learn about people and experiences and cultures that we might not have known about before. And it's 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 hard sometimes to read things that make you feel uncomfortable or make you feel like, ah, I just I don't I don't know. And yet you'll grow and you'll learn from those experiences. So um, the the history of Banned Books Week, and this is from the American Library's magazine article, 50 Years of Intellectual Freedom, written by OIF staff celebrating the office's anniversary. This is still on that uh, ALA website. It says that Banned Books Week was launched in the 1980s a time of increased challenges, organized protests, and the Island Trees School District's versus PICO, 1982, Supreme Court case, which ruled that school officials can't ban books in libraries simply because of their content. 
Banned books were showcased at the 1982 American Booksellers Association, ABA, Book Expo America trade show in Anaheim, California. At the entrance to the convention center towered large padlocked metal cages with some 500 challenged books stacked inside and a large overhead sign cautioning that some people considered these books dangerous. Isn't that interesting? It makes me think, and this is a little flippant, but it makes me think of the book in Harry Potter, the bon the monster book of monsters or whatever it's called, where they have to keep them in the cage. Unfortunately, it's not that lighthearted. These are books that, you know, have literally been, been, been caged, been taken out of circulation, um, made so that they are inaccessible. Drawing on the success of the exhibit, this article goes on, ABA invited OIF director Judith Krug to join a new initiative called Banned Books Week, along with the National Association of College Stores. The three organizations scrambled to put something together by the September show date and ended up distributing a news release and a publicity kit, hoping that with their combined membership of 50,000 people, they could continue to spark a conversation about banned books. The initiative took off. Institutions and stores hosted readouts and window displays morphed into literary graveyards or mysterious collections of brown bagged books. Major news outlets such as PBS and the New York Times covered the event and mayors and governors, governors issued proclamations affirming the week. Um, ALA is currently part of a national coalition to promote banned books week along with 14 other contributors and sponsors. And it goes on to say that today, Banned Books Week coverage by mainstream media reaches an estimated 2.8 billion readers and more than 90,000 publishing, industry, and library sus subscribers. The Banned Books page remains one of the two most popular pages on the ALA website. And finally, it says that books are still being banned and challenged today. Uh, we hear about it all the time. Um, a challenge is an attempt to remove or restrict materials based upon the objections of a person or group. A banning is the removal of those materials. While books have been and continue to be banned, part of the Banned Books Week celebration is the fact that, in the majority of cases, the books have remained available. This happens only thanks to the efforts of librarians, teachers, students, and community members who stand up and speak out for the freedom to read. So there you go. That's a brief history of Banned Books Week. So happy that, again, I um, found out about it before it happened, or during the week that it happened, and not two weeks after. As the daughter of a librarian and uh, an avid reader, seriously, how many times do I say that? I should just get business cards that say, I am the daughter of a librarian and an avid reader. So shush, I love books. Um, that's kind of a lengthy business card, but that's okay. But as the daughter of a librarian, it hurts my heart to think about books being taken out of the hands of people who want to read them. It it shouldn't be up to it shouldn't be up to me what you can read, and it shouldn't be up to you what I can read. Now, if you're worried about what your children are reading, well, don't just send them off to the library all willy nilly to <laughs> to pick out whatever they want. I mean, talk to your kids about what they're reading. If they're reading, that's that's so wonderful. I mean, not every kid likes to read. Some kids struggle with reading. And so when they find something that engages their mind and piques their curiosity, I can't help but to say, encourage that, encourage that, encourage that, encourage that. Don't say the first thing they pick up. Nope, that's banned. You can't read it. Nope, I don't approve of that. Maybe you don't approve of it. And I'm not here. This isn't a parenting website or this isn't a parenting podcast. I'm not here to tell you how to raise a kid. I'm just saying if a kid or a person of any age finds it isn't necessarily a reader, but finds something that that engages their mind, that lights them up, that makes them want to read more, wants to learn more, that is a good thing. And so I'm so glad that there are organizations, a lot of organizations that are part of this, uh, this, this organization, this coalition, and that this week every year to draw attention to books that have been banned or books that have been challenged and it keeps them visible so that they just don't disappear completely. 
We are going to take our first break of the podcast. When we come back, we'll be talking about some of the books that are on those challenged and banned books list. So stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. The average sedan is built with a steel frame and equipped with six airbags. Remember this the next time you see someone walking. Drivers, be aware. Pedestrians don't have armor. A message from the California Office of Traffic Safety. The average SUV has two blind spots, weighs between four and 6,000 pounds, and takes about six seconds to stop. Remember this the next time you're on foot. Pay attention, people. Pedestrians don't have armor. A message from the California Office of Traffic Safety. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and this Banned Books Week edition before the break gave a bit of of history from the ALA website about Banned Books Week, how it got started, um, how it's continuing, all of the people who or all the groups that support it, etc. And another link on their website is the um, top 10 most challenged books for each of the years, um, definitely up through definitely through 2001 and um th- there's one list that says before 1990 so that's interesting 2001 and then before 1990 what happened in the 90s but, okay <laughs> i think i'm just looking at that wrong doesn't matter but uh, i wanted to take a quick look at the top 10 most challenged books for 2017. Obviously, we don't have a list for 2018 yet because it's not over. Somebody could, you know, some book could could just take that top spot being, being the most challenged. Top 10 for 2017. 13 Reasons Why by Jay Asher. The Absolutely True Diary of a Part-Time Indian by Sherman Alexi. Drama, written and illustrated by Raina Telgemeier. The Kite Runner, written by Khaled Hosseini. George, written by Alex Gino. Sex is a Funny Word, written by Corey Silverberg and illustrated by Fiona Smythe. To Kill a Mockingbird, written by Harper Lee. The Hate You Give, written by Angie Thomas. And Tango Makes Three, written by Peter Parnell and Justin Richardson and illustrated by Henry Cole. And I Am Jazz, written by Jessica Herthel and Jazz Jennings and illustrated by Sheila McNichols. So that is the top 10 most challenged books for 2017. And it seems that mm, the majority of them, uh, obviously 13 Reasons Why, was banned because it discusses suicide. <laughs> I'm not going to get on my soapbox. <laughs> I was soapboxy enough in the first episode or in the first first segment. But just the, I'm just fascinated by if we ban things that talk about things we're uncomfortable with, then they'll go away. Right. And and we won't have to worry about our kids. The, and, and a lot of that has, and a lot of that comes up with the, the you know, the, the issues of gender identity and sexual identity, et cetera. And or, it, books that have sex in them, because then are, then the people, the kids reading them will, will be more sexually um, experimental or sexually um, active, et cetera. And I will just say, that my parents let me read whatever I wanted. I could go to the library, which was next door, which was awesome, and just choose whatever I want. And I read a book that I was way too young for. I don't remember how old I was, but um, it was a, there were threesomes. There was all kinds of crazy stuff in there that I just was not prepared for. And yet, somehow, I managed to make it through life without becoming like a crazed threesome addict. Oh, I can't believe I'm j- I just said that on the podcast, but I'm just, I'm fascinated by this theory that if you read about it in a book, it's going to make you want to do it. And yeah, maybe sometimes that's true. You read about some adventure that someone had and it makes you think, I could do that. I want to do that. But seeing yourself represented in a book or seeing that there are different ideas from what you know represented in a book doesn't seem to me to be a bad thing. And again, um, 
already been on my soapbox enough for this episode, but I'm wondering how many of those top 10 challenged books for 2017 you have read. I unfortunately have only read a couple of them, and I think I need to add a bunch of them to my TBR list because, hey, um, th why not? I need to read more banned and challenged books. I have read The Kite Runner and Yes, it was very difficult to read at times because of the content, but it was so well written. There were parts of it were there that were just beautifully written. And yes, you had to you had to read it's like life. There are there are the parts that are beautiful and there are the parts that are hard and there are the parts that are confusing and crazy and etc cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah, um I've read To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. Um and oh my gosh, that's it. Two of the 10. I am ashamed to admit that. I am so far behind on everything in life right now. <laughs> Definitely on terms of my to be read list. I also looked at a list of some of the most frequently banned, uh, some of some frequently banned um, children's books, which always surprises me. I mean, well, I guess children's books can be just as controversial as any other book, right? Um, so this one is a list of eight of the most frequently banned children's books. Topping the list is Harry Potter. And of course, that was on the the, the list. Uh, it topped the American Library Association's Office for Intellectual Freedoms list of banned books in 2000 after parents complained about the story's alleged occult and satanic themes. Mm-hmm. Yep, we're just ignoring the fact that it's about loyalty and friendship and good versus evil and all kinds of stuff. Uh, so, hey, at least uh, at least I've read that one. <laughs> the Giver by Lois Lowry. That's recently been made into a movie. It's a Newbery Award winner. And um, it's number two, number three, A Wrinkle in Time by Madeline Langle. And why was this one banned? Religious groups in particular have targeted the 1962 novel, arguing that the book undermines religious beliefs and challenges their idea of God. Mm, interesting. Um, in 1990, the Anniston, Alabama school district challenged the book because someone objected to the book's reference of Jesus Christ's name alongside figures like Buddha, Gandhi, and Shakespeare as the defenders of the earth against evil. Opponents felt that comparing Jesus to other great leaders implied that Christ was not divine. Oh, we get so upset with so many things, don't we? Uh, the Wonderful Wizard of Oz was banned by the Chicago Public, Li Public Library in 1928 because it was deemed not literature, but somehow rather evil for children. Well, those flying monkeys are scary. Um, I have not read, I don't think I've read The Wizard of Oz. Not all the way through. I've read bits and pieces. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, Hop on Pop. This one's my favorite. Number five is Hop on Pop by Dr. Seuss. And let me read this to you. Dr. Seuss's book of rhyming poems ranked number 16 on Publishers, Weekly, Publishers Weekly's all-time best-selling children's books and was lauded as one of the teacher's top 100 books for children by the National Education Association. But in 2013, a complaint was filed to the Toronto Public Library saying the 1963 picture book encourages children to use violence against their fathers. As if that's not funny enough, the complaint not only asked libraries to pull the book from shelves, but also demanded an apology to fathers in the greater Toronto area and pay for the damages resulting in the book from the book. The library reviewed the request and decided to keep the book. After all, a careful reading of the text reveals that the children in the book are told not to hop on pop. Oh my gosh. I, I, I got nothing. I'm going to just leave that one for you. Insert funny, witty comment here. Number six is, are you there, God? It's me, Margaret by Judy Bloom. I read this so many times, so many years ago. I know I've read it, but I don't remember. I don't remember much about it. I don't remember being horrified. Oh no. It was it was Bozeman, Montana that challenged the book. Come on, Bozeman. I'm from Montana. Now I'm just upset with my home state. Um, yeah, there was uh, along the way, Margaret expresses her feelings about boys and the joys and horrors of puberty, namely the desire to one day soon need a bra and get her period. Hey, I completely understood that as an 11 year old. 
yeah, totally get get that. Very upset with my home state right now for uh, wanting to ban it. Definitely would make, I know it made me feel like, oh, hey, I'm not the only one that has these feelings. And I am sure, I know other, other young women felt that same way. They, there have been studies. Number seven is A Light in the Attic by Shel Silverstein. No, A Light in the Attic is one of my favorites. I love Shel Silverstein. Love it. So let's see. This was um, this was the first children's book to make the New York Times bestseller list. It stayed there for a record-breaking 182 weeks. Um, it was perhaps a little too sophisticated, argued some parents. In 1986, a Wisconsin elementary school banned the book because it contained poems that glorified Satan, suicide, and cannibalism, and also encouraged children to be disobedient. More specifically, another school disproved of the book because it encourages children to break dishes so they don't have to dry them. Wow, we're being literal when we read. That's amazing. Um, wow. Uh, number eight, James and the Giant Peach by Roald Dahl. Let's find out why. Many of Roald Dahl's classic kids' tales have been challenged over the years for not being appropriate for children. It's true, evil adult characters are a common theme, but people have taken issue with James and the Giant Peach in particular. The book ranked number 50 on the American Library Association's Most challenge, Challenged Books of 1990 to 1999. The story follows an abused young boy who magically travels with a group of talking insects inside, you guessed it, a giant peach to New York City. Since its publication in 1961, the novel has been banned for being too scary for the targeted age groups. Mysticism, sexual inferences, profanity, racism, promotion of disobedience, and references to, to tobacco and alcohol. If you're wondering what sexual inferences you might have missed, a Wisconsin town banned the book in 1986 because of a scene featuring the spider licking her lips. Religious groups in the town argued that the scene could be taken two ways, including sex sexual. Wow. Okay. Um, I have... James and the Giant Peach is one of Roald Dahl's books, books that I haven't read. So if you know what it's pointing to in terms of racism, I'd be interesting to hear, interested to hear because I do not know what that's referring to. Um, if it's as crazy as the sexuality that's inferred, well, I don't know. Anyway, so that is eight of the top banned children's books, which is another interesting list. I think on that note, we are going to take our second break of the podcast. And when we come back, we'll be wrapping up this episode for Banned Books Week. Stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Book Review Podcast, and I will be right back. The average sedan is built with a steel frame and equipped with six airbags. Remember this the next time you see someone walking. Drivers, be aware. Pedestrians don't have armor. A message from the California Office of Traffic Safety. The average SUV has two blind spots, weighs between four and 6,000 pounds, and takes about six seconds to stop. Remember this the next time you're on foot. Pay attention, people. Pedestrians don't have armor. A message from the California Office of Traffic Safety. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. We are celebrating, talking about Banned Books Week, which is currently happening this week, September 23rd through the 29th. And um, rather than talking more about banned books and how depressing that depressed that makes me, I thought I would be a little more positive and go to the page on the American Library Association website. That's uh, www.ala.org. Uh, that talks about advocacy, and that's just slash advocacy, so makes it easy enough. And there, if you are wondering what you can do besides starting your own collection of banned books and um, flaunting them, <laughs> look at me, I'm reading a banned book. Um, there are lots of things that you can do. There's links for um, legislation, legislative active action center. Uh, it says we're advocating for libraries in Washington and we need your help. 
yes, libraries definitely need advocating for. And fortunately, a lot of people these days see libraries as obsolete. And that is just absolutely not true because as much as we who are book nerds love still love books, um, books are not the only things that libraries provide. They provide um, access to computers and internet. They provide, I mean, I can't even begin to tell you how much how much they provide for the community. You probably know just as well as I do how much they provide for the community. Um, there's a hashtag give ALA. Um, your gift to ALA supports literacy, literary advocacy, liter literacy efforts and scholarships to students entering the library profession. So if you're someone that likes to donate and you're looking for something to donate to this band books week, you can donate to ALA. There is ilovelibraries.org, supporting one of our nation's most important resources. I Love Libraries is ALA's advocacy website for the general public, and that would probably give us even more of an idea as to all the services that libraries provide. If you are looking for further resources um, for Band Book Weeks, Band Book Week, or just about band books in general, the ALA site um, also has, oh, uh, the, this, sorry, this is bandbooksweek.org slash resources has a whole huge list of different resources, student resources, event resources, um, writer and artist resources retailer resources, educator resources, librarian resources, publications. I mean, there's just a million different resources for whatever you might be looking for. And so if you're, you know, wanting to know more then that is someplace that you can go and get more information. And basically I would say whatever kind of resources you're looking for, whether it's um, classroom resources or more information or activities or advocacy or donating, donating, um, it, whatever you're looking for, you're going to be able to find it. It's not hard. You just you use your search, your, your, why can't I talk today? Jeez. You just use your web, your, your search engine, search engine. That's what I'm looking for. And type it in, type in a variety of different things, band booked weeks, band book weeks, activities, et cetera, et cetera. And you're going to come up with a lot of things. I would say whatever you do to celebrate, you know, whatever works for you, but read banned books, buy banned books, check them out from your library, support your library. That would be one of the major things. Support your libraries and um, get out there and well, and support, support banned books. Also buy them, um, support the authors and promote them if that's your thing, because inclusiveness and representation matters when it comes to books. We hear all the time when someone, when, how many people talk about I never thought I could do X, Y, or Z, but then I saw my someone that looked like me or acted like me or had experiences like me. I saw them portrayed in a book and maybe that book is made into a movie and then they saw themselves or someone like them portrayed um, in a movie and it made them realize that maybe they too could do those things. Inclusion of different types of people, different types of lifestyles, different ways of thinking is so important. Representation matters. And when we ban books, then we eliminate those stories and they aren't as accessible. So I feel like I've been nattering, 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 and I'm going to wrap this episode up. Uh, hope you do something to celebrate banned books, whatever it is. I would love to hear about it. Uh, hit me up on social media, Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Let me know what you're doing to celebrate banned books. Let me know your favorite banned book. What 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 book that you love is on the banned books list frequently? Let me, just let me know. I'd love to hear from you. So thank you so much for joining me. Please join me again next time when I'll be taking a little trip to Europe. Not personally, because sadly, not going to Europe anytime soon, but uh, taking a little trip in terms of what I'll be talking about on Tuesday. So if that wasn't cryptic enough for you, join me on Tuesday to find out more. In the meantime, have a great week, rest of your week, have a great weekend and go out there and get yourself lost in a good book. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. 
part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. From movies to music, from sports to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.